Today, I want to share our study on improving online informed consent with conversational AI. I'm Zhang Xiao, and this is a joint work with Tiffany, Carrie, and Hari. The informed consent process is the cornerstone of ethics in human subject research. The potential participant will understand study procedure and potential risks through the informed consent process. However, people don't read consent forms very well, especially participants from online. Many studies show that participants make their decisions without thoroughly read and comprehend the consent form. But people still report that they have read the, read the consent form well, which gives some participants an illusion of understanding and control that inhibits their ability to evaluate the given information and make a truly informed decision. Uninformed consent may cause actual harm, especially in high-stakes settings like medical experiments. It also creates a power gap between the participant and the researcher that deters trust and authentic answers. Sometimes, it invalidates experimental manipulations, creates unwanted confounding variables, and undermines the validity of the study design. So, how do we make an uninformed consent informed? So, in my undergrad, as a psychology major, I work at labs, and one of my job is to run experiments. To make sure participants make an informed participation decision, I often went through the consent form with the participant, answer their questions, make clarifications, and this kind of communication help us to make the informed consent process more effective. And I see this process as the initial interaction that builds the trust that ultimately may benefit the study quality. But in an online setting, this interaction is often wiped off. The researcher can no longer guide the participant through the consent form, and there is almost no immediate feedback if a participant has questions regarding the study procedure or anything else. In this study, we aim to bring the interactivity back, and we want to see if we can leverage conversational AI to go through the consent form with the participant, make clarifications, and answer their questions. So we built Rumi, uh, a chatbot that aims to simulate an in-person informed consent process experience where it goes through the consent form section by section, asks if the participant has any questions, and make clarifications. To build a capable conversational AI, we leverage an expert in the loop framework with large language model to make Rumi more knowledgeable while always delivering answers grounded on the consent form. To, to understand the effect of conversational AI for online informed consent, we ask three research questions. First, how would participant consent form reading differ in an AI-powered chatbot-driven consent process versus a form-based uh, consent process? And the second question is how would Rumi alter the power relation between the participant and the researcher? Third, how would the participant response quality differ in an AI-powered chatbot-driven informed consent process versus a form-based informed consent? To answer our research questions, we conducted an online study with 238 participants. The participant will be randomly assigned to interact with either Rumi or static form for the informed consent process. It is a dummy informed consent process that asks participants to answer a survey about a problematic social media use. So upon the consent, the participant will start the dummy study. Then in the second section, the real study starts. The participant will be asked a series of questions about the consent form and regarding their informed consent experience. We build the following measures. We measure the consent form reading through the two dimensions, recall and comprehension. The ability to recall information from the consent form suggests that people attend to the consent form. To access participant recall of the form, we inserted two random statements. Uh, watch a video with an orange cat, uh, and reading the study material in a blue background, into the procedure section and the risk section, and test participant recall on the two random phrases, uh, the orange and the blue. Such measures provide us a sensitive way to test the recall, as guessing the correct answer is very difficult. The participant comprehension of the consent form reflects the effectiveness of reading. 
So we measure the comprehension with a scenario-based approach. These scenarios ask about the participant to answer questions when some scenario occurs. So the scenarios are about like study procedure, potential risk, and action to take if a certain situation happens. For example, how the participant would protect their data if a data breach happens. The power relation between a participant and a researcher is measured by the perceived relationship, trust, agency, and control. Those three measures depict an important aspect in a power relation and help us to understand how Rumi affects the power dynamic between the participant and the researcher. So we measure the response quality by looking at the participant response to both choice-based questions and open-ended questions in the dummy study. For the choice-based question, we measure non-differentiation, which is a survey satisfying behavior where the respondents give nearly identical responses to all items. For open-ended questions, we create a response quality index based on our prior studies. It measures the overall response quality of the number uh, of the responses given by a participant on three dimensions, specificity, relevance, and clarity. So given the exploratory nature of our study, we use Bayesian statistics to analyze our data. So instead of focus on if there is an effect, the Bayesian statistics allowed us to focus on how big the effect is. In this density plots uh, of the estimated effect size, so if we see if, there, if the highest posterior density interval does not overlap with the region of practical equivalence, which is the green bar in the uh, plots, it means there is a significant effect. So as a summary, overall, people who are interact with Rumi uh, record more information and comprehend the concept form better. We observe a small to medium effect size for the recall and a medium to large effect size for comprehension. The interactivity provided by Rumi improves the consent form reading. Rumi also closes the power gap and promotes trust. The posterior distribution indicates a small to medium effect size for both perceived relationship and the trust, but no clear effect on the perceived agency and control. We also find that the participant who interact with Rumi provides a higher quality answers in the free text responses with a clear medium effect size. The quality differences in the choice-based question does not show a clear effect. So to further understand the underlying mechanism, we build a Bayesian structure equation model to see how the consent form delivery method interacts with the consent form reading, the participant research relation, and the survey response quality. The model suggests that potential paths where the chatbot delivered consent form increases the response quality through a better participant research power relation. Such a pathway suggests that informed consent process could not only help participants to make an informed participant's decision, but also be served as a treatment to improve the study quality. Based on the result, we can answer our research question firmly. The conversational AI improves the consent form reading. And it alters the power relation and increases the trust between the participant and the researcher. And ultimately, it improves the study quality. So our work examines the effectiveness of bringing interactivity back to the online informed consent process through conversational AI. Combining our prior work on using conversational AI as an information collection tools, we did see a future opportunity to build a virtual research assistant that could help researchers to manage human subject studies from the beginning to the end. The informed consent process could be considered as a treatment. At the first interaction happens between the participant and the researcher to improve the overall study quality. It also offers the implication for helping people make an informed decision beyond the online social, behavior, uh, online social behavioral studies, such as decisions on the data sharing practices or data sharing with AI products. So that's conclude my talk. Thanks for your attention. I'm happy to answer any questions. Thank you.